Hey everybody, I'm Jeff, and welcome back to my shop. Today, I wanted to talk about this guy. This is the Media Blaster cabinet from Harbor Freight. If you're not quite familiar with what that is, basically it's a big metal box that you can put stuff in, and it sprays any kind of abrasive media all over it to change the surface on the outside. You can use anything from baking soda, walnut shells, glass beads, or like I use, abrasive sand. Like the sandpaper sand, not like play sand. And this is generally uh, to affect this outside surface of different types of materials. Usually metal, but you can do all sorts of materials in this. It's great at cleaning off rust, paint, mill scale, tooling marks. I personally mostly use it as surface prep to clean off parts that come from the lathe and the milling machine. And it prepares the surface and makes it ready to accept different kinds of finishes like chemical bluing or spray on paints, things of that nature. Basically, it's a really good tool for getting a gorgeous satin or matte finish. It's incredibly even across stuff. Now, I've had this one for just over four years now, in fact, just barely over four years. And I've used it for a lot of parts. I've used it for a number of projects, some of which you may or may not have seen on this channel. And what I'm going to show you, we're going to get into today, I had to go through and clean out this cabinet after said amount of time of use. I went through, I noticed I was getting some leakage. I was losing some of my sand material. Uh, there were some other problems I was having with the sprayer, and I figured it was just a good time to just go through, check it all out, make sure I didn't have any leaks, fix any mechanical issues, give it a, you know, a clean-up and a tune-up, and then reload it with sand, and we'll talk about it a little bit, share some of my experiences, some of my thoughts with that. So, that being said, let's just get right into it. This is the box how it was before. It was sharing as much abrasive with the outside world as it was with itself. Before I could really do anything, there's a lot of cleanup to do. I'm using the vacuum that I use as the dust collector on the unit, mostly because it's already full of sand. I definitely want to get all this old media out of here because it's, it's mostly dead. It's old. It's like three years old. It's seen enough uses to where it doesn't really cut anymore. So we want to get as much of it out of the inside as possible. I finally figured out where all of my sand was going to once I inspected the bottom at the drain port. Alright, after doing, giving it a little vacuum out here, we got to clean it up to kind of work with it. This, whatever you call this kind of connector, this is like, this is our problem right here. So we've got this cap that fits over this flange, whatever you'd call it. That bung's probably not perfectly sealed, but it's probably close enough. But it has had this seal fitting in here somehow, and this thing's clearly just broken. It's just got a hole in it. It clearly was more like a cup shape, and it would actually somehow fit in here and seal. I'm not entirely sure, so our options are to pull this whole thing out and just replace it with something that actually makes sense, just like a threaded plug of some sort, or to find something that would uh, fit in here and replace our seal. This little connector bent my brain for a little bit. I tried finding a replacement one or replacement seals for it and could not at all. So I had to go with my next best option, which is to fit a threaded plug into this. And what I used was a reducer bushing, a PVC three quarter to half inch reducer, and then a half inch plug to screw into it. After some different trials to get it to fit in there securely, I basically just had to use some epoxy and glue it in permanently. I had to sand off some of the powder coating to make sure that the epoxy would stick. I don't feel that this is the most elegant way to do it, but it will work. Static electricity can build up inside of the cabinet, so I made sure to only use solvents on the outside to avoid any future fumes hanging around. When you buy the cabinet, they're nice enough to include a little pack of these liners for the interior portion of the view screen. These are just some sort of plastic with an adhesive on them, and it protects the glass from getting, well, sandblasted. Getting this new liner in wasn't as difficult as I thought it might be. Although, the best practice probably would have been to go back and actually use a razor blade to scrape off all that old adhesive. It doesn't seem like it's a problem in the short term, but who knows how long it'll stay on this time. 
The difference it made changing it out, though, is huge. I, it's like a brand new cabinet. I don't know what this hole's purpose was. It came with a plastic cover that I almost immediately lost, so I've always just covered it with tape to keep the sand in the box. I'm sure you guys will tell me what it's for. The blaster itself was pretty rough. It's probably the worst out of the whole assembly as far as like repair and cleanliness. The valve is locked open. The trigger really wasn't doing anything. It was just full blast all the time. And everything else is just really dirty and the nozzle's pretty well worn. Nothing that a good soak and some basic repair can't fix. The valve comes out of the back. The screw is super delicate. It's got a really shallow hex and I'm pretty sure I damaged it trying to get it back in. The valve stem is pretty basic. It was a little bit challenging to get out. But you can get at it from behind the trigger. You just push it from the front. There is an O-ring in there, and I did replace this. It's kind of difficult to get out, although I was able to do it without destroying it. I just decided to replace it just to be safe. There are also a couple of bushings that, well, the stem of the valve seats up against and is aligned by, and honestly, you don't, I don't believe you need to remove them to clean everything out. I ended up removing both of them, which wasn't necessary, I think it was an extra pain. At first, I didn't think that the nozzle was that well worn until I had compared it with some of the new nozzles. These also came with the machine when I bought it. Haven't used them since. So I decided to use the, the nozzle that looked exactly like the one that was already in there as far as diameter. It had a lot more meat on it. There was originally a seal around this little screw that holds all the valve guts in place. In fact, if you rewind and try to go find it, I bet you can. However, it was damaged by the time I had removed this screw, so I just replaced it with some Teflon tape, this yellow stuff made for gas. And that's exactly what it's supposed to do. The replacement media that I got for this is aluminum oxide, and it's 120 grit. Pretty fine for this. I like it, though. I'm used to using the white stuff, and this is a mixture of the white and brown, so we'll see if there's any difference. This little piece I want to use as an example is actually a collection of failures from the milling machine and then my early practicing with TIG welding. It's got a little bit of light rust and some good scale, so we can see how the machine does with it without it dirtying everything up immediately. Right off the bat, the blaster itself acted a little clogged up, but then it, it got smooth and d did a really good job. I feel this is pretty well representative of what it can do for a part that's, well, otherwise ugly, but the surface is nice. So, how is it to use, you may ask? And that's valid. It's, it's 
pretty inexpensive for what it is. It's not very large. It fits on top of a bench or a table. I made just a, a basic plywood table out of shop scraps to set this on and then underneath it I can keep, well, like the vacuum cleaner and various air connections. It's, so it's not very large, it's not very expensive. Blast units like this take a lot of airflow. You, you, you're almost never going to have enough of an air compressor and that's probably my biggest drawback with this operation is that I don't have enough air. And that's really not the fault of this cabinet. Now, as you saw in the cleanup, the, the sprayer had some issues. The valve was just open all the time so I'd have to get creative with connecting air <laughs> to get it. And so clearly, just by nature of it being in this giant box full of sand, yeah, something had gotten into the valve on the sprayer and locked it open. It didn't take much to fix. The, the sprayer itself, though, it's a pretty cheap-looking unit. You know, I don't even know if Harbor Freight sells the sprayer standalone. I've never seen it there. Never really looked, though. But I imagine if they did, it would be like one of the $10 or $15 air tools that they sell. It's not high quality really and you saw just as I did that it's basically just cast aluminum it's whatever it doesn't need to be fancy however I think if I had a legitimate complaint about that uh, the screw on the back of the sprayer that I needed to unthread to pull the valve out and clean it is very shallow a very soft material that hex in there is basically asking to get stripped out in fact I think I started to just as I was tightening it tightening it up so that's a definite look out for that be very careful about that the unit itself i mean it's a big box the door is very smooth and solid i'm pretty impressed with with how well the door operates for for whatever that's worth the seal around the door is pretty impressive the neoprene on it hasn't worn away or foam rubber or whatever that is uh, it hasn't worn away the adhesive hasn't started pulling off it hasn't started rotting and this has been out here you know kind in a non-climate controlled shop for most of its life. So the, the fact that it's still doing well after this period of time is, is nice. Uh, as far as the rest of the box goes, I mean, it's, it's nice and it's surprisingly heavy duty. It's all riveted together and I think welded. I haven't had any issues with, uh, you know, anything feeling loose or, or not solid. On the inside, everything is still really well coated with the powder coat. I mean, just as it is on the outside, the only spots that you can even start seeing bare metal through are on the actual grate where you rest your parts. And that's where it gets sandblasted all the time, every time it's in use. My gripe with the cabinet in its benchtop design is the drain. And that was clearly a sticking point when we did the cleanup was that the drain was what failed. And that was why I was losing sand and it was generally underperforming. And it's such a weird design of a very specific plastic diaphragm that had a piece of rubber acting as the seal that wasn't replaceable. I couldn't find a replacement part. Harbor Freight doesn't carry it. The plumbing guys at the big box stores I went to looked at me like I had three heads when I brought it in. I don't think that the solution I showed in this video of using a threaded cap and a plug, I don't feel like that's the best fix for it. I think, I think we could get more clever with that and I've had a few thoughts. But if I'm being honest, I really just wanted to get it up and running again. And it'll give me more time to really think about a way that would make it less awkward to change. Part of the awkwardness, however, is with the location of that drain hole. It's in the very middle of the bottom of this cabinet, which is on top of a bench. So I have to scoot it more than halfway off of a bench to try to get up under there and open it up to let the sand drain out if and when I want to drain the sand out, which is part of the reason that I hadn't drained the sand out. It's also not in the bottom of its funnel. It sits on the side, so there's still a little trough of sand underneath it. So as far as as far as that goes, just a general design, it's just a big WTF to me why they went with it that way. I mean, I guess I can kind of see some of the decisions made, but that is a thing. It's, it's not a deal killer, obviously. It's just dumb and annoying. These gloves have held up surprisingly well. Uh, they're one of the things that people have complained about, the uh, import cheap sandblasting units, I think sold by everybody, but obviously especially by Harbor Freight. Uh, that they say the gloves are very delicate and will tear, rip, you know, get tore up easily. I haven't had that problem with them. Uh, they are replaceable if you do that. And you can even get better ones from other companies that are probably going to be more comfortable, more easy to use, and tougher. But these, for four years of use, have held up great. The only babying I've done to them is I put nitrile gloves on inside of them. I'm told that your skin oils speed up the, the process by which they get tore up. The view screen, I'm pretty impressed with, honestly. You saw me change the interior 
cover for it. The one I pulled off of there was, was the cover that came with this unit, and they send you like three others, which is honestly really cool. Changing that internal cover made it look like brand new glass. Now, some of the older Harbor Freight sandblasters, I think, used like a polycarbonate or a Lexan or, I don't know, some sort of plexiglass. And in fact, some of those older units are why I think a lot of people just why people judge these so harshly. The, the older design you may see pop up on like Craigslist and stuff like that. And it's a little bit shorter, I think. And the door is actually the view screen, which is like flips up and it just, it's, I don't think it's actual glass. And, I mean, yeah, it, it doesn't take much thought to realize, hey, that's, that's not, like, it's very clearly not very well thought out. So this, this one that they've sold for a few years now clearly is, is a better unit than that. They do say that this glass is tempered, which I question because <laughs> the first day I got it, brought it home and used it, I broke it right here. Uh, there's a little spider web here in, in the glass where I put a halogen work light right on there, thinking that was a really good way to light the inside of the cabinet. And those things get so stupid hot that yeah, it caused the glass to spider up. Caught it fast, covered it with packing tape, and it's been fine ever since. <laughs> Uh, no, no problems there. In fact, that's the same piece of packing tape from four years ago. The seal that holds the glass on is also seemingly fine. Uh, it's, you know, I, I don't have any movement with it. There's no leakages. Everything's still nice and solid. Other than adding an air source, which we'll talk about in just a few minutes, the other things that you need to add to this when you get it are going to be some sort of dust extraction and a light. I mean, these technically aren't mandatory. You can run the machine without either of them, but uh, it's... Come on, you're really going to want to. For a light, I had tried a couple of things, like leaning a halogen light on the view screen, don't do that. And I tried like one of those strip, strip lights you can get from Walmart for very inexpensively. What was kind of a fast solution was actually just using the whole socket with switch attached from a desk lamp that holds just a regular like ceiling light. And it fits right here on the side of the machine pretty much perfectly. And I just put an inexpensive LED bulb in it. And it works really well. It gives a lot of light. This isn't even a good LED bulb, but that's a really nice solution right out of the gate. You can just find an old lamp or build your own socket of some sort. Be careful if you do. For dust extraction, I've got this vacuum cleaner. This is one of the wet dry vacuum heads that fit onto a five gallon bucket. You get them from the big box stores. The vacuum cleaner head just fits onto a five gallon bucket, which I like that kind for this application because it's a vacuum cleaner. I move around to different buckets in the shop for different specific things that I'm cleaning up, like specific types of metal chips, or in this case, dirty crap that's mixed with sand specifically. I actually attached it to fit using the hose from another vacuum that I had scrapped. If you ever see a vacuum in the trash or something, these hoses grab them because they're great for stupid little things all over the shop. The little attachment head where this hose fit on its old host vacuum actually slides really well into the port on the side of this machine. I put a wrap of tape on there just to keep it in place. As for the tip going into the vacuum underneath, well, I just found a piece of PVC that allowed me to fit the two together. And so it's a really nice little system. I turn the vacuum on, it, it creates pretty low pressure in there, which is really good for just keeping stuff out of the air, getting stuff out of the whole machine that you don't want in there, like all the dirt, paint, rust, things of that nature. Gets them all out of there. I do still wear a face mask when I'm using this. Uh, I think it'd be fine to run without one, but I'm paranoid and you should always just be very wary of your lung safety. And lastly, the part that doesn't come with this cabinet that you absolutely need to run it is the air compressor itself. I don't have a good enough air compressor and the one I got is also Harbor Freight and I, I don't need to say anything about it other than I need to upgrade it. You're gonna want a good, like you can't run this off of a little pancake compressor. If you, I mean, maybe for just a, a few seconds at a time. Even with my 21 gallon compressor on this, I get about 30 seconds of spraying before it kicks on. Anyway, those are my thoughts on this unit. It's, it's fine for what it is. If you've got bigger, heavier stuff, you're probably gonna wanna look for a bigger, heavier unit. Uh, but if you're just doing small home workshop type of stuff, I think it's a really good bargain for what it is. And you know, in my use case, it's definitely, it's definitely stood up over a, a, a few, a few years of use. And it definitely appears that it's just going to keep on going for at least four or five, six more years until I ultimately upgrade to a bigger cabinet. Anyway, if you made it this far and you liked the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I do a lot of home workshop stuff with metal and other materials, and I do the occasional tool review where I share my experiences with stuff that I use here in the shop.
You can also check me out over on Instagram, it's at Practical Renaissance. And if you really want to, you can go support me over on Patreon. All my patrons get a sticker sent to them, and I post my videos there early, so you can check them out before everybody else. Anyway, thanks for watching, have a wonderful day, I'll see you next week.